your heartbeat, your family's heartbeat, our heartbeat. Facing the Salish Sea, Lemmy Tribal Elder Raynell Morris uses this beach near Ferndale, Washington to connect with her ancestors. We love you. We know you're starving. We hear you. To the Lactamish people, southern resident killer whales are family. So what happens to them happens to us. They're starving for salmon. We're starving for salmon. They're unhealthy because of the water. And now we're at an all time point of extinction for them as a population, as a people, as our relatives. The species is made up of three families, J, K, and L pods. L pod, the largest family, has 34 orcas. J pod includes 25, and K has just 15 as of this year. The decline in numbers began in the 1960s, when southern residents were picked out of the waters of Puget Sound. Some of the first organized captures were led by Ted Griffin and his team from the Seattle Public Aquarium. It was completely legal. There were permits issued. Capturers corralled the orcas with speedboats and even bombs, ensnaring some in nets. From the 60s to mid-70s, hundreds of whales were captured in Washington and British Columbia waters. But the southern residents, in terms of you know number of whales and, and the impact on the population, were really hit the hardest. At least 11 died in the process, and 36 were taken into captivity at marine parks. Specifically, young orcas, including Tokate. By 1987, known as Lolita at the Miami Seaquarium, she was already the only survivor of the orcas taken from Puget Sound. Because those captures weren't random, because they were targeted at young individuals, it's not that a third of the population is randomly removed, it's that a generation is removed. Dr. Michael Weiss's team at the Center for Whale Research started tracking the southern resident population in 1976. Researchers roughly estimate there could have been 120 before the captures began, but by 1976, 71 orcas remain. And it, it really took a Washington state level bit of legislation to say that there would be no more killer whale captures within the state. Slowly, the southern resident population rebounded, all the way up to 98 by 1994. Because for a time, their food supply, Chinook salmon, was plentiful. But Chinook stock has declined for decades. Some populations have decreased by as much as 90% since the early 20th century. Chinook were classified as endangered in 1994. So you've got one endangered species relying on another endangered species to survive. The Southern residents received that distinction in 2005. This not only protects the taking of orcas, but puts policies in place to encourage conservationism. As many organizations have joined Morris, and the Lemmy tribe in trying to save the Northwest's beloved whales. We don't have any more time. It's now. It's that urgent, that critical. It has to happen now. And it's so urgent because there are other human caused factors that are preventing the Southern residents from thriving. Tomorrow, we explore the impact of pollutants and the other challenges that the orcas face today. For Environment Northwest, I'm Drew Andre.